each week at the Total Coder community, which is my private community, if you want to learn Golang and other programming languages. And what happens is each week I basically bring out a programming assignment. And these assignments are yanked from real companies, so they are real, go most of the time, Golang programming assignments. Well, people can actually solve that in the language they want, uh, but a lot of people are here to learn Golang and they solve that in Go. And I'm going to read the assignment of week 19, which was the previous week. And I'm going to review one lucky member, which is Zoltan Fulop here. Uh, so if you're interested in uh, basically each week as well, at the end of the week, I'm doing a live stream where I basically review your resume, I review codes, your code, whatever, whatever question you have, it's going to be a private live stream. So without any further ado, let's basically read the problem statement here that we have of week 19. And then we're going to jump into a review. So basically assignment week 19. Uh, Backend problem statement, bidder, bidders and auctioneers. Design two services, bidding and auction, one which is bidding on an ad request and an other which is performing the auction from multiple bidders. The bidding service receives an ad request, an HTTP request for an ad object with an ad placement ID, a unique string identifying an ad slot or an ad spot. Every ad request should be responded with an ad object that should contain at least an ad ID, uh, a bid price, um, in case the bidding service does not want to buy an ad slot, right? If, if we don't want to buy an ad slot, the service call uh, should return a 204. This can also be in a random order, right? Uh, in case the service bids for an ad request, it should return an ad object with a 200. Status code. This is the bidding service. Then we have the auction service. Uh, the auction service uh, shall call multiple bidding services, right? So we have an auction service. It's basically going to call multiple bidding services. Uh, at the same time, the auction service gets all the bids available from associated bidding services as a 200 status code response for valid bids. The auction service should accept an ad placement ID in an external exposed API. The auction service selects the bid for an ad placement with the highest bid price amongst services. So basically going to call, you're going to spin up uh, a bunch of requests and then you're going to aggregate and get the best bid price basically a very well realistic example for these uh, advertising brokers right uh, auctions actually so uh, the auction service should have a safety circuit to prevent bad bidding services from increasing latencies okay um, I already I already see it coming if a bidding service does not respond with 200 in milliseconds the auction service should not accept the bid for auction from that bidding service. This is such a good example, right? This is such a good assignment. Your code will be tested by making a call. Yada, yada, that's fine, that's fine. That's all, 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 all things. So this is a, that's actually why I'm doing this uh, on, on this YouTube video because it's such a cool thing that actually brings Golang completely uh, at the number one spot of languages to solve this. And so without any further ado, let's open up uh, Zoltan's code here. So you need to understand that Zoltan basically is not a pro Golang professional. He's here to learn Golang, right? He's here to learn. Uh, so basically the first thing that I see is uh, a very, this, this project root, I like it, I like it because I see a readme uh, which has some installation guides here. Clone the repo, navigate, make run. That's noise, that's noise. Uh, we have a make file, good. Uh, we have a docker files, amazing. Uh, a docker file for the bidding service and a docker file for the auction service because we need to have, um, I, if I correct me if I'm wrong, we need to have a couple of bidding services up and running and the auction is going to query them all, right? and then uh, get the best bit. So what do we do? We start with the bidding probably, I guess. Um, yeah, yeah, let's start with the bidding here. Uh, wait, let me double check here. Uh, yes, let's do the bidding. All right, we have a main, very simple. Uh, handle func slash bit, the bit handler, and it's listening to a hard-coded port. You could say, yeah, but the port should be in a configuration variable. Uh, yeah, maybe, but hey, nonetheless, I like what I see, not too much. So let's go into this bidding handler here. Uh, we have this add object, uh, perfectly fine. We have a UUID here, add ID, but underscores, that's preference, that's nice. Uh, bit handler. Uh, what do we do here? We have, okay, simulate not bidding and returning no content. So what he's doing, because if we check this, as actually, I, I like this already, because if you check uh, what they say here, that, um, can I can I quickly quickly spot that? Uh, yeah, here, for example, in case a bidding service does not want to buy. So he's basically simulating a random event that the bidding service do not want to buy, right? Uh, and it's going to return with a 204. And they actually said it can also be in a random order, right? 
So what it's doing here is basically saying, hey, um, we're gonna take a random. We're gonna take a random integer between zero and ten, and if it's smaller than two, uh, we basically go into return the status no content to simulate that, like that. Bit price, a random price here. That's good. So also pretty cool that he's basically working with integers because um, a lot of people work with floats, and that's not the best idea if you work with financial instruments with financial numbers integers are the way to go but hey just a small small thing here uh, which is good right he did he, he, he using int is fine uh, so random bit price then we're gonna create an add object we're gonna create a new uh, id here uh, the bit price and then we're gonna say yo content type application json and uh, we're gonna return it like this hey i like what i see here you know what i mean i like what i see i think they want us to use a standard library uh, 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 not quite sure. I thought I saw that, but it doesn't really matter. He's doing that, so that's already good. All right, so this is basically the bit uh, service. I don't like a spacey, but hey, uh, we're gonna probably boot a couple of these and then we're gonna query them from the auction handler, let, uh, the auction service, which is another. I, I really like this because even though you have this contained package right the main that's going to be built in a docker file here and then we have the auction which is the same thing i really like the structure here uh, with a test as well uh here the same thing let us quickly inspect the test here uh, you see using the http test new server amazing get this thing uh do some checks i like it um this guy never wrote probably never wrote any goal line right or just a couple a couple of months or whatever he's, he's not a specialist at all and he does this. This is amazing. I'm gonna lie. Uh, main heat bidding. So the server up and running heat. Uh, again, hard coded port, but that's just nitpicking. But I still, I can imagine if you're doing a job interview, sometimes they're gonna say, "Hey, why is this hard coded?" Because they want to see how you handle configuration. Maybe I think I think actually that's a very important thing to take uh, in consideration. Is that um, let let them know. Let them know you do an OS get env or something else. You know what I mean? Uh, that's good. Handle func uh, slash right byte. Welcome to the auction service. <laughs> okay, this is a this is a, a thing. It's only matter. It's like a, a little bit of a an HTTP uh, menu, but it's fine. Handle func slash auction. That's where it happens. Let's go to this auction handler real quick. So the main, I like it. Small. I would do some flags here, some flags uh, or some other configuration. You know what I mean? But it's fine here, right? Uh, all right, auction handler. Let's close this thing again. The space heat. Hey, this is what it is. The bidding service response. Okay, so the bidding service is going to return with an add ID, which is basically the add ID from the best uh, from from the auction uh, from the bidding service, right? That ID that is returning, and then a bid price. So here is getting interesting. This is basically uh, where the magic happens, right? The add placement ID. We're gonna query this thing. Um, okay, that's 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 fine. Uh, I'm gonna do a print here. You could use an S log or something. Uh, and, and I don't really like a log print LN. Uh, you would do an S log uh, structured logging, in my opinion, here. But hey, that's just one one caveat. Here, the bidding services, right? So it, it, he creates an uh, array of bidding services, uh, which is perfectly fine, hard coded, but that doesn't really matter, right? Doesn't really matter. Uh, you could say service discovery and all that shenanigans, but that's out of scope. Uh, create channels to receive bid responses and adders. So he's going to create uh, a channel of bidding service response. It's a pointer. Really don't know why we need a pointer here, but but still. Um, and the length of bidding services, that's fine. And then it's probably, yeah, it's all the same thing with these adders, right? So what you could do is make one structure and use that uh, to basically use as, a, as your channel. He basically decided to create an uh, bidding bit responses channels and also three adder channels and then a sync weight group probably uh, to basically wait for until all these uh, requests are basically completed right uh, so he's basically looping over the bidding services which are these endpoints here he adds one to the weight group that's fine then he makes this go funk url that's fine defer vg dom perfectly fine is basically calling the bidding service. I instantly uh, spot the problem. 
we're gonna discuss that so it does okay if there is an error we pipe it in here what am i doing here uh if write it into the error here and otherwise he writes the response into the bit responses here right um he's basically going to lock wait for all the responses gonna close the whole shebangs perfectly fine uh gonna iterate over the bit responses again these pointers we could do that without don't really we, we don't need this pointer here for bit range bit responses we are going to check uh if it's not nil because that's basically when uh there is for example a status 204 right the small chance that it could be remember from the bidding handler otherwise we're going to check uh if the bit price is bigger than that the best bit is perfectly fine you could say we could ha do this in another function but i think it's because right now we have a handler right this is a handler which basically is some kind of a uh, where you you need to keep them as small as possible right but this this is already advanced topic what i'm what i'm talking about advanced it's actually basic stuff but um it's maybe out of scope but a handler needs to be as clean as possible you basically um seri uh, serialize uh, your, to your object call the business logic probably call the database after your business logic you need to store something or you do it in your business logic depends and then you basically deserialize no, you deserialize business logic database serialize, or you do business logic and database in the same thing. What he is doing is he adding business logic in his handler. Nitpicking, maybe I understand, but I'm just giving you some hints and tips. You might want to extract that into your business logic function because then you can use your business logic function in other handlers that are basically not HTTP related. Well, well, not JSON related. Maybe not HTTP related. Could be gRPC. Could be Trift. Could be Kafka. You know. Uh, that's what you could do very common pattern in a microservice world that you basically uh, decouple these two things okay so that's fine then we have this best bit uh, if it's not nil because maybe they are all nil <laughs> could be um, I'm actually happy that he covered this thing I would forgot that I wouldn't forgotten that but he basically took care of this use case well this uh, yeah use case that it's basically nil. otherwise we basically return the best bit back and this is basically called bidding service. So, couple things that we need to basically take in consideration here. The first thing is where is context? Nowhere to be seen. And I think that they basically explicitly uh, called 200 MS here, um, which directly wrinkled the bell of a context dot context uh, angle. Right? This is 100% a context angle here. The thing is that. But I see he uses the HTTP client with a timeout of 200 milliseconds. That's basically the same thing, right? So if the if the call to the bidding service uh, takes longer than 200 milliseconds, this is going to work out. Nonetheless, a context is basically the best approach here, in my opinion. Let me know in the comments what you think about this. Is a client timeout enough or do we need to use context? I think we need to use context because if call bidding service could be an interface, could be an interface so you can easily test it. And if some people might want to use a context in, in their implementation, but they ha don't have it uh, because this is an HTTP client. What if you want to do something else without an HTTP client? Maybe it's a Trift client and a Trift client uses a context, then you're screwed. So what do we do here, guys? Uh, we're going to do this. We're going to say context. Uh, CTX is going to be a context. I'm not going to actually implement the context here. Uh, there are videos on the internet uh, from me and from Melky and from whatever. For everybody has a context video. Uh, but you should always use context here if you're going to call an external service, 100%. Um, if you think that's wrong, I cannot imagine that well, one, one is going to say that's wrong because that's actually the case. I'm not going to lie. Uh, so what you could do here is very simple because you have the request here. You have the request here. So what you could do is basically put the R context in here, right? And then the URL. Boom. And now you have this one. And now you can cancel. You should do something like this, right? For example, the cancel function. Uh, cancel. Uh, what is this? Error? Is this error? No. CTX probably. It's, it's this. CTX cancel is going to be context uh, dot with timeouts, I guess. And that's going to be the context we already have, our context here. And then we're going to say time uh, a millisecond times 200, something like that. And then we basically put this context in here. Uh, is this really a cancel? It is, right? So we could actually underscore this because mug this because we're not going to use the cancel. 
Why do we need to cancel? Because you can manually cancel when you want. Maybe there is an error and you want to cancel it, right? Because these things are happening in a Go. Well, actually, to be honest, you need to do it like this, not in a Go routine. You do it outside of your Go routine. And you're going to create this con. Actually, to be honest, um, this or go yeah, 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 this is fine. This is perfectly fine. Um, because right now, this is basically firing this up in a Go routine, which is in Valhalla. So with this cancel function here, if you have this cancel thingy, what you can do is manually cancel it if you need it. For example, if there is an error or something, you could cancel this. Oh, well, actually, you can cancel it whenever you want. For example, with an error, right? Let's not do, dive too deep in the rabbit hole here. Um, but besides that, I think it's really good, especially from not a Golang professional. This is so very good, man. I'm not going to lie. But the context is something they going to increase your chances. 100% use context. How do you need to implement context is up to you here. That's uh, not on this scope. But for example, it's just doing the client get response, blah, 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 yada, bidding service, return that. It's pretty fine. I like it. I like it. I like it. That's basically his implementation. To be honest, guys, I really love uh, this assignment and you should maybe try it. Join the total code. You can, it's still open and you can check all the assignments we have. Uh, they are saved. I really like this because it's showing uh, the go routine example you could do here uh, for fetching the stuff, uh, the context example for the 200 milliseconds. Uh, you can even, if you really want, add uh, some more microservice specific things like uh, metrics and instrumentation to this stuff. Um, there's so many cool things with these services. Maybe service discovery even. You can make this project as big and as small as you want. The question rather is for an assignment, how big need it, need, do it needs to be, right? That's always the question. Um, so, hey, let me know what you think about this. Happy to see you in the Total Coder. Check the link in down, in the, down in the description. If you like the videos, subscribe to the channel. Give me a thumbs up and leave some questions in the comments. I also have a Discord community. You can join that for free. Thanks, everyone, for watching this. And I'm looking forward to see you in the next one. Love you all.